following the new restrictions we've put in place. In, in the main, everybody's responded favourably and we deeply, deeply appreciate it. We know this is a really frustrating time for our citizens, but we also appreciate we're all doing this to keep each other safe and especially to keep those most vulnerable safe. As I mentioned yesterday, today our health authorities are focusing on those areas where there has been outbreaks or clusters and ensuring there is more testing done in those areas. I'm also pleased to say that in New South Wales, we've done in excess of 103,000 tests now. Uh, and that's a good thing because the more you test, the more you can identify and the more you can exclude people who don't have it. But more importantly, you can isolate those that do and make sure their contacts are also on high alert. And this is a good thing. And we'll continue that testing regime. It's one of the things that's allowed us to make sure we try and contain the spread as much as we can, and that's critical. We also appreciate that given what's occurred around the world, that the supply of medical equipment isn't what it used to be. New South Wales relied on many different sources of equipment, including many sources from overseas, which no longer exist or have been massively disrupted. And so today, I'm calling on the great people of our state, the, those great business people, those manufacturers who are able to retool, to consider retooling, to help supply those additional things we'll need in coming months. Whether it's sanit sanitisation, whether it's um, yeah, sanitizers, whether it's medical equipment, and a whole host of other things which our hospitals will rely on in the coming months. And we say this because we have confidence in the people of this state, we know already that many companies have started retooling, many companies that, that used to uh, construct other things are now building bottles or, or actually converting their product to sanitizers. So we know that's already occurring, but today we formally start the process. And uh, this morning, uh, businesses can log on or any individual who can need support in retooling or would like to explain what they're doing in retooling can simply go onto newsouthwales.gov.au and there's a special portal for them with information on the types of products we'd like to see uh, manufactured in New South Wales, uh, the types of jobs we'd like to see created in New South Wales and how we can support them in doing that. So again, if you go to newsouthwales.gov.au, you're a business person or a manufacturer or someone who, who, who has some intelligence on, on what we might be able to do in New South Wales, you can do it through that portal. Uh, but again, today, my message is to thank everybody for their cooperation, to thank everybody and appreciate the frustration everyone's going through but also say to everybody, um, we're deeply grateful for the cooperation, but we have to remain vigilant. Do not look at the number of cases and whether they're up or down on a day, because um, it doesn't take long, it doesn't take much for things to get out of control. At this stage, we are still to an extent controlling the spread, containing the spread, but we know we can't do that forever because uh, this virus is virulent. It spreads really, really quickly and very unfortunately too effectively. Uh, and therefore we have to maintain our vigilance. We can't let our foot off the pedal, we can't relax. And I know that's a difficult thing to say when so many families now are struggling with the new arrangements and, and adjusting their own lives and we're grateful for that. But the important thing to remember is that we're all in this together, all of us are having to adjust, all of us are having to, to do things in a different way, but it's to keep everybody safe. Um, what I intend to do now is uh, ask Commissioner Fuller to give an update uh, on the issues he's responsible for. Then uh, Dr McAnulty will give us an update on the cases and the situation in New South Wales. And then I'll ask Minister Ayres to explain a bit about the retooling efforts and initiative we're launching today. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Premier. Acknowledged Minister Ayres, Dr McNulty. Well, good morning. The airport operation continues. We've seen some 3,000 Australians repatriated into New South Wales and they are currently in hotels in isolation. We've got approximately another 700 people coming in today. I spent most of yesterday reviewing our processes around health, welfare and security, and over the next 24 hours we will certainly improve those. I know there's people who are posting on social media their dissatisfaction. Uh, look, some complaints are reasonable and we'll deal with those. And there's lots of other people that are behaving well and they're just glad to be home in Sydney. So. You know, we shouldn't you know, frame everyone in these hotels as people who are ungrateful because that's certainly not the case. And every day we get through, then they're a day closer in terms of going home, which I think is a wonderful outcome for everyone. In terms of the police operation on the ground, police are still responding to calls for service uh, like they did pre-virus and doing an outstanding job. We know two nights ago, new powers were switched on in terms of an escalation uh, seeing people self-isolate, etc. And we know what this is for. It's for our safety, the safety of our families and our neighbours. 
police have been out enforcing these laws. Uh, and I know there has been some criticism of police, which I don't accept. I accept the criticism of my leadership, certainly. We continue to re-educate our force almost daily in terms of changes around powers and policy. We haven't issued one infringement for the new powers at this stage. I've asked police to show a high level of discretion. I've mentioned this yesterday and the day before. Our power of discretion is one of our most powerful powers and we'll continue to use that. I'm not suggesting we write a ticket to someone or a business owner. Self-isolation is still important for all those that return from overseas pre-Saturday night and we issued a ticket to someone for that yesterday. But again, I would ask that the community continues to work with us. We understand these changes can be difficult, particularly with our culture, uh, to readily get and, and we'll continue to work and give you our best advice and guidance. I know there will always be what ifs that will be challenging, but the message is si simply around small numbers are safe, which is to stay home when you can. If you need to go to work, please continue to work. It is so important for our economy long term. If you need medical assistance, pharmacies, doctors, your hospital, you can leave. If you need food, you can leave. If you're driving home and you need a takeaway coffee, there's nothing wrong jumping out the car and grabbing a coffee. Just don't sit down and have it there. And I'm sure most people aren't doing this in a malicious way. It's just our lifestyle. But we need to continue to be reminded that what is safe, safe is being at home at the moment unless you have to work. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr Jeremy McAnulty from New South Wales Health. I'd like to give you an update on the numbers. So to date, we've, uh, at 8 o'clock last night, we've had 2,182 confirmed cases in New South Wales. Uh, this includes 150 new cases uh, confirmed yesterday. Uh, in total, we've tested 103,361 people and have been excluded. And sadly, there have been nine deaths. There's a new death reported yesterday, sadly, in a 95-year-old woman from the Dorothy Henderson Lodge where a, a number of cases have been reported previously. And we're pleased to see that the uh, ad additional testing has been, as recommended yesterday by Dr Chant, is occurring uh, among GPs, but also with pop-up clinic uh, at Bondi beginning today. Thank you.